This week we're moving on to module six and we're going to talk about clones. The clones, a mystery revealed. So despite the critical drubbing of Phantom Menace, it still made a packet at the box office and after a short break, George Lucas went straight to writing episode two, which would finally reveal the identity of the clones from the Clone Wars mentioned in episode four. But although their identity, as opposed to identities, since they all come from the same donor, is indisputable, their purpose, usage, and ultimate fate is probably one of the most problematic elements of the Star Wars universe. Note, as any time cloning is involved, it seems to cause big problems. Uh, see Episode 9 for reference. Allegedly, watching the animated series of the Clone Wars helps clarify this somewhat, but it never answers the question of how people who are able to read minds, the Jedi, are so easily duped into leading an army that was specifically created to kill them. So the script was finished three days before shooting was set to start, which somehow was not a problem, but the new camera they were planning on using wasn't ready until 24 hours uh, before it was due on set, uh, which was a huge problem. Um, and that's all from how Star Wars conquered the universe. Uh, this was the first of the Star Wars movies shot entirely in a digital format, and the technology of 2000 was literally 21 years behind where it is right now. The Sony Panavision Cine Alta was a $100,000 camcorder that could shoot HD resolution at 24 frames per second, which sounds really quaint today, but that was like groundbreaking then. Um, and that would give, uh, at least give casual viewers with considerable nearsightedness uh, the illusion that they were watching a quote unquote film. Um, unfortunately, the way the camera captured its images was particularly problematic for blue screen shots, which literally consisted of 99.9% .9 of the shots in episode two. Um, ironically, using a green screen might have solved the problem since the blue screens that ILM was still using at that point were more appropriate for film-based compositing than for effects originating and remaining in the digital realm. Um, it'd be another 10 years before digital cameras became truly cinema-worthy, but George Lucas was always a pioneer and Attack of the Clones only looks like total shit about 50% of the time. Initially controversial, the move to a digital Yoda has actually aged better than the phoned in puppetry used in The Phantom Menace, uh, which of course was eventually replaced by CGI in later editions. Uh, from a functional standpoint, Episode 2 fills the empty space between Episodes 1 and 3. Uh, it advances Anakin's story closer to his ultimate downfall and has a relatively enjoyable battle scene starting two-thirds of the way through uh, and more or less running until the end. Unfortunately, a detailed analysis of the film reveals a lot of missed chances, poor choices, and general delusion as to what Star Wars fans really, really want. Uh, do they want clumsy romance? No. Convoluted and poorly explained political intrigue? No. Literally hours of exposition to cover up an overall lack of clarity? Hell no. Space battles? Yes. Um, Jedi cutting off each other's arms and elaborately choreographed lightsaber duels? Hell yeah. The film has more of the former than the latter, unfortunately. Uh, which explains why it is routinely ranked as the worst or one of the worst of the Star Wars movies. Uh, the rise of Skywalker and Last Jedi kind of complicate rankings because their fans and detractors tend to be passionate to the point of psychosis, thus skewing any kind of objective rating system. Uh, personally, I'm kind of on the fence with Attack of the Clones, um, although I'd never call watching it an enjoyable experience. Um, it's well-documented deficiencies don't quite compare to the extraordinary disappointment that is The Phantom Menace. You know, after waiting 15 years for a new Star Wars movie and you get that. Whereas, you know, Phantom Menace lowered everyone's expectations. There you go. So the notes for Attack of the Clones. So, directed by George Lucas, as we know. Uh, written by George Lucas and Jonathan Hales, um, who probably wishes he hadn't agreed to do the rewrite after reading it, because, um, you know, some of that's definitely on him. Uh, the budget was $115 million. The box office was $311 domestic, plus $650 million worldwide, everything uh, included. Um, so our synopsis, after an assassination attempt kills the protective double of uh, Senator Amidala, um, you know, one of them, the one that's the main one at the time, Obi-Wan assigns the now teenage Anakin to be her bodyguard and goes off himself to find out the identity of the would-be assassin. And somehow this leads him to the discovery of a mysterious clone army whose purpose won't be apparent until the end of the third movie and a separatist, separatist bug planet where he and the rest of the Jedi are forced to fight the mysterious Count Dooku, uh, an arena full of monsters and a shitload of robots. 
This is not a good film. Just going to say it. From an objective standpoint, it fails on many levels. First 20 minutes are watchable. Decent chase. Um, as are the last 50. And in between are some of the most excruciating scenes ever created in the history of cinema. And not even like so bad it's good. It's just so bad it's bad. Um, so also just try to focus on the shiny spaceships and the novel sound design. Uh, the seismic charge explosions in space are really quite lovely. There's no sound in space, but... But the sound in this space is really cool. Uh, and try to ignore the story that, unfold, that, ho that holds about as much water as a cardboard box. If you've ever put water in a cardboard box, that's exactly how this film kind of works. Um, Hayden Christensen is the third actor in this trilogy um, whose life was possibly ruined uh, by his appearing in it. Um, fortunately, the recent upward reevaluation of The Revenge of the Sith has quieted many of the haters. So that's good. And as an honest friend once told George Lucas, not sure which one, um, said, you can write this stuff, but you sure can't say it. That's a whole lot of that going on in this film, too. I apologize for providing you with the four, four by three pan and scan version of this film. You know, the square one. Um, but again, it's oddly appropriate. I think this is a film that deserves to be seen in, on VHS. Um, and it is also Lucasfilm's fault for making sure that 99% of the DVDs out there of this movie... They weren't produced in widescreen. And even in 2003, that was kind of weird. We we're already kind of going widescreen then, but all of these are pan and scan. Don't ask me why. Amazon doesn't even say which version it is. It's just like, here you go, $3 or less, 99 cents, whatever. Nobody wants this movie, but you're about to watch it. 